All right, let's look at Action Park. And improved and open once again. Fantastic. Anna Gilligan is there this morning. Hello, Anna. Hi, guys. Yeah, I think you're seeing some guys jump off the Tarzan jump here. At oh, Action Jesus Park. Christ. It's been closed since 1996. They reopened it on June 14th. I'm here with the owner, Andrew Mulhaville. He's also the son of the man who founded it. Thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Thanks for coming out. What a day we have. It's beautiful here at Action Park. So I got to ask you because Action Park got a bit of a reputation. Oh, my God. <coughs> um, some people got injured. That was 30 years Jeez. ago. The world has changed. I mean, when my dad started the park... He like was that already? Like what they're doing right there is just an injury waiting to happen. And what? That looks like one of the light versions of the what they have. Bringing inventors in. Now it's highly regulated. Everything's engineered. I love Action Park because it's so beautiful. Had to let you know the Coraline YouTube video was so good. Thank you. Dude, look, look at that shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah, totally safe. Oh, my God. The year is 1976. Gene Mulvihill, the head of entertainment company Great American Recreation, has added a new attraction to Vernon, New Jersey's Vernon Valley Ski Resort. Two brand new alpine slides were installed to keep business up in the off-season. What? What? Dude, if you're slightly off balance, you're flying, dude. What the hell? An alpine slide is a one-person cart ride, in which the rider rides down a hill in a smooth track. The rider has a brake lever in between their legs, giving them complete control of their speed. The attraction had become popular for ski resorts in the late 70s, and Vernon Valley Ski Resort's Alpine Slide was advertised as an attraction for all ages, claiming, we've the, had grandfathers. The owner created all the rides and he wasn't an engineer? <laughs> wow. <clears throat> we've had kids of kindergarten age coming down our runs alone. I also have a picture showing a mother controlling the sled with an infant in her arms. It's that easy. After the success of the slide, why, why would you brag about that? Why would you brag about someone carrying an infant while they're doing this? Oh my God, who the hell would do that? Terrible, terrible parenting. ...with his plans to expand the ski resort into a water park during the off season. He added two water slides and a racetrack, and more slides, a softball field, a tennis court, and a swimming pool were added shortly thereafter. The Vernon Valley Summer Park it was, was the 70s? To yeah, I guess park, that's true. A thrilling amusement park where you control the action. More slides and rides were added, and they began their big marketing push to draw audiences into their new water park. Just go to Action Park, there's no other park like it. School for Engineering and those rides you created were disturbing another level. That's one thing I would like to do. If I, I ever park because it's so beautiful. Like went out to college again, I'd I would, I'd want to do engineering. <clears throat> That'd be fun like to flow. learn. It's great. These are the most amazing rides in the world. I love it here. There's nothing in the world like action park. The park was revolutionary. The 70s, Not dude. only was it one of the first water parks of its kind in the United States, but it also marketed itself as the biggest. It was I eventually love it. home to 75 rides, 40 of which were water slides. Action Park was split into three themed lands. The first was... Motorworld consisted of three types of attractions, land, water, and air rides. Yo! On land was the popular battle action tanks. For an additional fee... Okay, that's actually fucking sick. Wait. Guests could ride inside tanks equipped with tennis ball cannons. The goal was to shoot the other tanks in the caged area on one of their targets, disabling their cannons for 15 seconds. Those that chose to ride the tanks were allotted 5 minutes to do so, and those that did not want to ride could pay to use a stationary cannon from the outside. Okay, Ma that's actually kind of sick though, wait. That's actually kind of cool. Maintenance employees attempting to fix broken down tanks would be subject to fire from the rowdy guests, making the attraction a nightmare to work at. The other two land-based Motor World attractions were the Lola Cars and the Super Go-Kart. Yo, that's like... These aren't... These aren't regulation at all. These are just look like... Like souped up go-karts. Both of which were cart race attractions. The Super Go-Karts were driven on a small loop. 
The carts themselves were designed to max out at 20 miles per hour, but the employees found that sticking a tennis ball in the governor device allowed the cart to go as fast as possible, with the new maximum speed being around 50 miles an hour. Head-on collisions frequently sent guests to the hospital, and the fuel the engines overwhelmed riders at times. The Lolo cars were mini open cockpit race cars driven on a longer track, and they cost an additional charge to ride. Their maximum speed could also be tampered with by park employees. These were also used after hours by the workers, sometimes being taken off the track and driven on the nearby highway. There were two water rides in Motor World. The super speedboats were driven in a small circle around an island in a super pond. Super Bro, super speedboats? What? that also had a large population of snakes in Number it. 12. The guess what often- Monkey attacks 100 people. Thank you, Travelers! You eat. What? Dude. Super speedboats, bro. Have you guys ever seen, like, like how fucking dangerous speedboats are in general? An attempt to bump nearby boats, as if they were on Motor World's other <laughs> water attraction, bumper boats. These were boats placed in a small pool and were designed to withstand guests crashing into one another. These were known to leak gasoline, which once required a guest to be examined after too much fuel leaked on their skin. The boats were also incredibly small, and riders with long legs had to position their feet off the side of the boat to fit. This led to injuries and bone fractures after collisions. Finally, Ow. Motor World had two airbase attractions. One was Space Shot, which was a typical drop tower ride and was one of the safest rides at the park given it was only open for Action Park's last operating year. That's the funny. second air ride was another upcharge attraction, Slingshot, which was also fairly safe. This ride was a common amusement yeah, park that carnival before. ride, in which guests were shot up on two bungee cords and flipped upside down as they flew through the air. There's no doubt that Motor World had its dangerous I've done that before. But this is just the beginning Slingshot's of what kinda, Action Park that has one's in scary. store. Another section of the park was... Many non-water-based attractions were located in their own section of the park, sometimes labeled the One of the, the safest, center. and it's the freaking slingshot, dude. That that shows that shows a lot. These included the aforementioned alpine slides, oh, as well God. as a bungee jump titled the Snapple Snap-Up Whippersnapper Ride. Originally having two jump stations and then later four, what? guests could jump off the tower for an additional fee. A skate park also had a short run at Action Park. It was poorly designed, as it was surrounded. I'm sorry, can I, can you run that by me again? Find slides, as well as a bungee jump titled the Snapple Snap Up Whipper Snapper Ride. Origin the Snapple Snap Up Whipple Snapple Ride. The Snapple the this. Many non-water-based attractions were located in their own section of the park, sometimes labeled the yeah, Alpine Snapple, Snapple, These Snapple included the aforementioned Alpine Snapple slides, ride. as well as a Snapple bungee jump ride titled the Snapple, Snapple Snap Up Whipper Snapper Ride. The Snapple Snap Up Whipper Snapper Ride. Got it. Originally having two jump stations and then later four, guests could jump off the tower for an additional fee. A skate park also had a short run at Action Park. It was poorly designed, as it was surrounded by concrete and had uneven edges, which led to many injuries during its existence. Sounds about Interestingly, right. Interestingly, Action Park also had an attraction entitled the Action Park Gladiator Challenge, partially based off of the popular American Gladiators TV show. This included obstacle courses and jousting matches against the Action Park Gladiators. Finally, Action Park had its own monorail called the Transmobile. This went to the Ski Lodge, the Alpine Center, and to Motor World. So far, Action Park has proved to be dangerous, but where are the absolutely terrifying rides? Where are the rides that are so insane that their mere existence is unbelievable? Moreover, where are the water slides? Oh no. Dude, it's always the water slides, man. It's always the water slides. This section put the action in Action Park. Waterworld had it all. It was home to the tidal wave pool, a 100 feet by 200 feet pool that- I'm guessing people died in this pool. Dude, can we talk about wave pools? Like, why? How? What? Like, how? Dude, wave pools are the most disgusting. You so hard, your balls explode. Thank Lyaku you. Gifted a tier one sub to Azand. I thought, thought it was Azan, but thank you so much, Lilico. But dude, wave pools are disgusting. They're nasty as shit. They are pointless they aren't fun why do people like wave pools so much i don't get it man is it really that cool like it's it's literally just piss like that's all it is it's just piss 
You're, you're, you're bouncing around and piss. Like, what? what's the point? It's piss, but with waves, you know what? You're right. What's a wave pool? Literally a pool that makes um, waves. That's it. It has like a machine that like makes big waves. Piss waves in my face. Mm, I just like to let it shower over me. The piss, like the warm, the warmth of the piss shower over me. That could hold anywhere between 500 and 1,000 Tangy people. waves. The pool floor was slanted, and the further guests went in it, the deeper it got. Waves went 20 minutes on, 10 minutes off, and they could reach a height of over 3 feet. This was challenging for swimmers of all skill levels, as the pool was hard to read and the fresh water was more difficult to swim in than salt water. A dozen lifeguards were on duty at the pool, and they would have to save around 30 people on a busy day. Jeez. The Tarzan Swing was a heavily advertised attraction in which guests- Dude, I, I worked at- I was a lifeguard for a while. Dude, I could not imagine having to save 30 people a day. That would be stressful. Dude, I would save like one person like every few days, you know? Like 30, people's, 30 people a day? Jeez. This would swing on a 20-foot cable over a pool. This spring-fed pool was so cool that lifeguards would have to rescue guests that could not swim. Dude, what if someone just like accidentally flew too far and just landed on that wood or it landed over here or over here? Like, what if someone got scared, let go too early? Like, there's so many bad things that could happen after the shock of the cold water. This was also a popular attraction for men to pull down their yep. pants or women to pull up their tops for the line of people to see. The appropriately named Aqua Scoot gave guests a sled, with which they would slide down an assembly line style roller coaster, hurtling them toward a shallow pool that they would skip across. If the guest was oh, not in an dangerous. ideal position, it would get caught under the water, sending the rider crashing forward. There were originally a pair of these slides, each 30 feet long, but a third slide was eventually added. The diving cliffs had two jumping bases. One 23 feet and the other 18 feet tall. With the don't don't call a diving cliff an attraction, bro. Come on, that's just like that's literally just lawsuits waiting to happen. The pool below being 16 feet. The pool was also for non-jumpers, some of which were unaware of the cliffs, which resulted in collisions. There was only one lifeguard on duty who had to work extra hard to make sure that no one was at the bottom of the pool. Oh the super speed God. water slides, also known as Geronimo Falls, were a pair of high speed vertical water slides. One of them was steeper than the other, and both were dangerous. Near these was the safer Kamikaze, which was a more traditional tube slide. The kayak experience was pretty self explanatory and used underwater fans to simulate water rapids. This was dangerous, but that goes without saying at this point. A similar ride. Underwater fans? Okay, yeah, what? That just sounds like someone's arm's gonna get chopped off if they accidentally fall in the water. The roar and rapids allowed guests to ride in a one or two person raft down a similar river. The Surp Hill had riders slide down a multi- What the fuck? ...laned multi-hill slide on a mat. Riders oh could easily God. cross over to the adjacent lanes and cause collisions. And the seventh hill, nicknamed the Backbreaker, had an additional hump that would send riders flying, resulting in injury. Oh my god! What? Slide on a mat. Riders could easily cross over to the adjacent lanes and cause collisions. And the seventh hill, nicknamed the Backbreaker, had an additional hump that would send riders flying, resulting- Dude! Look at that! Oh my gosh! It's even called the Backbreaker! Like, what? How? Dude, the 70s were so crazy, dude. Was it the 70s? Do we have like a year for this stuff? Like, dude, this the 70s were insane, bro. Resulting in injury. The Colorado River ride was another raft ride, this time allowing up to four people, and it went through the wooded area of the Oh park. my god. At one point, the riders would come to a fork in the river and had to choose between two paths. The first path took guests under a waterfall and a series of tunnels. The second path included a waterfall and another fork, with one path being steeper than the other. The ride also included a foot-tall jump that would allow riders and the raft a short airtime. The Aerodonium was a skydiving simulator that caused injuries when guests would try to stop their falls with their arms. Yeah, Waterworld also no. had a variety of other typical water slides and pools that were less notable, but there is one in particular that has yet to be mentioned. This is the attraction that made Action Park the most infamous, the Cannonball Loop. A tubed water slide with a vertical loop. What? How? 
What? How do you even? It doesn't even look like you could fit in that. Similar to that of a roller coaster. It was rumored that during the testing of the attraction, Mulvihill offered $100 to employees who were willing to try it. Test. Dude. Imagine, like, imagine it being so dangerous they literally have to pay people to ride it. Not even people. They have to pay employees to ride it. Yeah, they're going to call it the spine snapper, the spine bender. Dummies apparently came out of the loop without their heads. Wait, what? Tubed water slide with a vertical loop, similar to that of a roller coaster. It was rumored that during the testing of the attraction, Mulvihill offered $100 to employees who were willing to try it. Test dummies apparently came out of the loop without their heads. Test dummies came out of the loop without their heads. Look how small that is. There's no way, dude. There's there's literally no way. Like this dude probably like had no idea when he made this. He probably has no clue about anything with engineering making this. He's like, you know what? Let's let's just add a loop. It's just a slide with a loop. I mean, what? That's that's easy to make. Just make a loop. Like, come, uh, you know, you don't have to figure out how big the loop is or how big the tunnel is. Just make a loop. Like, come on. When it was open, guests would be weighed, hosed down, and given they a set of instructions to decrease it. the possibility of injury. A hatch was added to the top of the loop to assist stuck riders that could not make it all the way through the slide. Many guests that completed the loop came out at the bottom, suffering from bloody noses or other injuries, either from hitting the top of the loop or the impact on the way down. The cannonball loop was indicative of a larger issue with Action Park, as many of the other attractions were poorly crafted by designers that were less than engineers, and most were designed to minimize cost rather than maximize safety. Yeah, like what if, yeah, what what if like a large person got stuck? Like imagine that, imagine like you don't have the speed where your back stays on it, and you just like boom, 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 like ping pong. You would ping pong on these, like you, you would, oh. The oh. rides became even more dangerous when paired with the fact that the park sold alcohol at many of the convenience stands, often to minors. There was even a microbrewery near Motorworld. Many of the guests visiting the inexpensive park came from low-income areas and did not have the necessary swimming skills to navigate some of the attractions and pools. Action Park also heavily marketed to Spanish populations, what? but there were no translations or translators for the guests when they visited, so explaining safety instructions was virtually impossible. You already know that Action Park has the most innovative and exciting rides. The Alpine Slide, Grand Prix race cars, and spectacular water rides. Dude, to be fair, like, promoting this in the 70s, I bet Action Park, like, banged. Because it looks fun. Like, it does. It looks fun. And you probably just trust them that it's safe. You know what I mean? Because obviously people aren't that smart. You know, they're not going to be like, oh, I, I don't trust this. I don't trust Action Park. They just, they just go full cake corner. Like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go down. Let's go down a, a loopy water slide. To be fair, chat, I just want to mention water parks are the most disgusting things in the world. You know what's funny? I remember I was at a water park. Well, back then they think, well, if it's big corporates, it should be safe. Yeah, true. But back then, uh, I, I was at I was at a uh, Holiday World. Yeah, I think it was at Holiday World, and I was at the water park. Not exaggerating. There was like a a eight year old kid, right? Literally like pants pants all the way down to his ankles. He lifted his shirt up. He's literally just pissing in the lazy pool. Like, just no parents to be seen. No one stopping the kid. Literally, shirt up, pants to his ankles, just pissing in the lazy pool. After that, I was like, I'm, I'm never doing water parks again. Did he poop too? Probably.
W. But Action Park means more than just great That's rides. Thank you for the it means bits. super Hopefully live shows, fantastic scene. summer festivals, and scrumptious food and drink, including an authentic. There's a turd floating in a wave pool where I work. Dude, the amount of turds I had to clean out. Did, actually, you know what? You want to know the difference is? If there's a turd in a pool at a water park, they ain't shutting down the pool. You know? Like, they're just probably going to have a lifeguard go in, snatch it, and get out. When, Like, when I was a lifeguard, when a kid lays a turd, we literally have to empty the entire pool. We have to get everyone out of the pool. I have to go in. Scoop up the turd, get out, and they have to literally drain the pool and refill it to get, like, a clean pool. And you have to, like, bleach the pool. Like, it, they literally do have to do that. Because, you know, poop is gross. But at water parks, they're not going to shut down a pool just because a kid poops. German Brewery. Come to Action Bark because the rides aren't the only thing that's great. Labor Day Polish Festival, September 6th and 7th. Old people getting drunk, let's go. The majority of those employees were teenagers and were not equipped to handle the rowdy guests of the park. So on any given day, you could have an overcrowded water park filled with drunk teenagers that couldn't swim, riding shoddily built attractions supervised by teenagers that may or may not wow. be able to communicate with them. Dude, I feel bad no for the people who work next. there. On July 8, 1980, Let's a male go. employee was riding the Alpine slide when his cart went off the track. He hit his head on a rock during the crash, killing him. He was oh only 19. God. Two years later, on July 24, 1982, a 15-year-old guest was overcome by the waves of the tidal wave pool and drowned. On I've, August I've heard of that one. I've, I, I remember hearing about that one, the kid who died from the wave pool. First, a mere week later, a 27-year-old guest was riding the kayak experience when he was trying to re-enter his kayak after falling out. When doing this, he made contact with the live wiring that powered the underwater fans. The electrocution sent him into cardiac arrest, and he passed after being rushed to the hospital. I'm sorry? What do you mean? Do they just have open wires in the water? What the fuck? How do you have a live wire in water? Two years later, in 1984, a guest died on the Tarzan swing after a heart attack, supposedly due to the unexpected shock from the cold water. That same year, on August 27th, a 20-year-old drowned in the tidal wave pool, and on July 19th, 1987, another guest drowned there, giving it the nickname WAVE POOLS, DUDE! In the grave pool. These deaths are tragic, and often overshadowed by the lunacy and legacy of Action Park. Interestingly enough, Action Park was able to avoid many lawsuits with these deaths and many other injuries, due in How? part to its reputation, and also the lax regulations New Jersey had for amusement and water parks. Great American record- Dude, the 70s, dude, you could get away with murder, you could get away with this stuff. Like, do you could get away with everything. What the heck, dude? Like, every time I hear of, like, some crazy murder, like a serial killer killing, like, ten people, it's like, oh, he got away with only a year in jail. Oh, wait, what year was this? The 70s? Oh, that makes sense. Like, what? what is going on, dude? Like, was it that crazy in the 70s? Holy shit. The good old days. Creation was even able to expand the Action Park brand to other parts of the country, opening Pocono Action Park in Tannersville, Pennsylvania in 1980, and Action Mountain in Pine Hill, New Jersey in 1984. Get what? Get what? At Action Mountain. Feel the thrill as you zoom through the black hole. Spin and but my mom says back in my days, I won't underestimate her now. Back in my day, you could kill 10 people and only get a year in jail. Or race around the Grand Prix track. You could have three kids die in your water park and in your wave pool and it not get shut down. It's awesome. Pocono Action Park had many repeat wet, attractions poggers. as Action Park and was closed in 1991. Action what? What is this? The only Pocono Action Park reference image I could find is this creepy clown Grand Prix ticket from eBay. What? What is this? Action Mountain ran into some financial difficulties with the IRS and the town it was located in, and was closed in 1986. 
So why did the original Action Park close? While Action Park and Mulvihill Hill were able to avoid lawsuits with many of the accidents and deaths, the two deaths in 1984 stemmed cases that rightfully plagued the park with a variety of legal problems. Mulvihill Hill eventually pled guilty to five charges of insurance fraud. He and his associates claimed that the park saw over 1 million guests a year, and therefore the death toll was comparatively low. The local ER, on the other hand, said that they would have to treat 5 to 10 guests on some days. In response to the high amount Jeez. of guests visiting the hospital, Action Park bought Vernon, New Jersey, new ambulances. Despite all of these issues, the downfall of Action Park wouldn't come until 1996, and it was actually due to Great America. 1996? Wait. I was alive. I was alive at that time. Yeah, they actually bought them new ambulances. New ambu- like what? Yeah, it's like, it, instead of solving their safety problems and and solving the fact that they have a buttload of injuries a day, they're like, Oh, we'll we'll just we'll just give the people who treat the injuries better stuff. You know, to to supplement the amount of injuries we have instead of fixing the injuries, instead of making sure people don't get injured. And recreation's financial issues and not the park itself. On September 2nd, 1996, Action Park ended its What? final season, still with the hope that it would reopen the next year. However, Great American Recreation's bankruptcy made it impossible for Action Park to continue operations, so it didn't reopen. After this, the ski resort and Action Park were handed from investor to investor, undergoing renovations for two years before reopening in 1998 as Mountain Creek. Safety was a priority under this management, and a valiant effort was put forth to distance Mountain Creek from Action Park's reputation. However, in 2010, Mountain Creek underwent a bankruptcy of its own, and the water park and ski resort was sold to the Mulvihill family. Two years after this, in 2012, Eugene Mulvihill passed away, and his son Andrew Mulvihill took over ownership of the park. Two years later, in 2014, it's the same logo. Mountain Creek was. Oh wait, no, that wait was rebranded back to Action Park. Oh. The park reopened many of its classic attractions and started construction on new, terrifying ones. The Sky Caliber was. That's literally just falling. That's a 90 degree angle. That uh, you're you're literally just falling. You're not sliding at all. Another attempt at a 300. And Dude, that you're literally just falling. What what is this? Just jump off the tower. Like if you want the thrill, just jump off the fucking tower. What the fuck? Just jump. It's it's safer. In 60 degree vertically looping water slide. Although it used technology to enhance safety. From my knowledge, it is yet to open at the park, and there's almost no information on its status. The new Action Park tried to use nostalgia to draw guests back for two years before in 2016 it was renamed back to Mountain Creek in order to once again get away from the negative connotation of Action Park. <clears throat> Early this year it was announced that Johnny Knoxville would be producing, writing, and starring in a film inspired by Action Park, but it was not shot on location. Death is heartbreaking, especially in environments designed for happiness and joy. Despite six people losing their lives there, Action Park is not remembered for its death toll. It is remembered for and by the kids that grew up with it and survived it. It is seen as a place where the quote-unquote popular and brave teens hung out. The fact that it was referred to as Traction Park or Class Action Park doesn't matter, because its inherent danger is more of a fond memory to the majority of its visitors. The burns, bruises, and the fractured tibias were a rite of passage for its former guests. You think you're cool because you survived a tame roller coaster at Disney in California or at Universal in Florida? Well, welcome to Vernon, New Jersey. Were you able to survive Action Park? I mean, it's true. That's a funny Johnny Knoxville, though. I mean, to be fair, like, he's got a point. Like, I bet people. Yeah, not to brag or anything, but I survived the Action Park vertical loop with only a broken nose. Like, let's be real. I bet people do that. I bet people are very like, Oh, yeah, you see this Action Park where people died? I survived it. They, they, they like, compare it to the fucking war. 
<laughs> they have like PTSD. Every time they hear that jingle, they're like, oh, oh God, I thought, thought I was at Action Park again. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.